my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your weekly astro tarot and intuitive forecast for the week of September 9th, 2019. There are a lot of things that we need to discuss. And the first thing is this wonky type of vibe that's coming through with Neptune. At the end of this week on Friday, we have a full moon in Pisces. Now, if you don't know, Pisces is ruled by Neptune. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've said this multiple times. And if you are part of the Bahati Vibe Tribe, you've heard me say this time and time and time and time and time again. But not everything is either all good or all bad. It has just energy that is all that it is. And with the Pisces full moon, it brings, I don't wanna say good or bad, but it brings a certain vibe, a certain energy, and especially so with Neptune. Neptune rules Pisces, and Neptune is, I don't wanna say a key component in the energy of this week, but it's something that we can, can't can not talk about, and it brings a special energy to it as well. Basically what this energy looks like, and I'm gonna start with the quote unquote positives. This is how we can work with this. First way that we can work with Neptune energy is by create creativity, by connecting with our creative selves, by our artistic expression through music, through dance, through art, through love, in that way, just allowing ourselves to paint and to be colorful and to be moved on a level that doesn't even logically make sense, it's not practical. Even though a lot of the planets currently are moving through the sign, a lot of the personal planets are moving through the Earth sign of Virgo, which wants practical and realistic. When we're working with Neptune, this is taking us and, and pulling us to a space of unlimited potential and creative expression and explosion, which is really, really good. This is when we want to connect with the specifics, the details of this ultimate dream vision that we have for ourselves. Emphasis on the word vision. This is idealistic. This is something that we think may not be possible for ourselves because it seems too good to be true. But internally, we have this feeling that it is so divinely appointed for us. It is the deepest desire of our heart. It is the most magnificent, colorful, beautiful, ethereal, glittering thing that we could possibly envision and manifest in, in our lives that we are being called this week to get it out of our spirit, out of our heart, out of our minds and put it onto paper, to turn it into a thought, an idea, into some type of tangible evidence to help it to manifest. And one thing that works for me and one thing that you guys have heard me say time and time again is to write it down, to set intention, to get it out of our heads, out of our heart, out of our spirit and turn it into spoken word or written word by working our intention, by working candle magic or just putting it out there, writing it in a prayer, okay? So that's one way that we can use that Neptune energy. The other side of this, the challenging aspect of this is this space of deception. Now, I don't think that deception is the right word because I don't feel like people's motives are to deceive or that your motive is to deceive. It just is that how you may be coming across or how something is approaching you is not all that it seems to be. And if you dig a little deeper and if you look behind the veil, you would see a little bit more than what is presenting itself to you on that surface. And with that, we really wanna be very cautious and we wanna be mindful. That is a big word that I want you guys to put a pin in for this week is mindfulness and awareness. Overarching this week, I want us to be connected to mindfulness, staying neutral, and the power of being still. I feel very strongly that a large chunk of you are taking steps every day to become your highest and greatest self, your highest and greatest version. And these are the decisions that you make every single day from the smallest to the largest decisions that you make, who you are allowing to access your energy, the foods that you're ingesting, and the things that you're saying yes and no to. Then I see those of our world that are not taking those same actions and they're not taking those same steps and they are operating from a space of lower vibration. The word that comes to me for that is they are almost intimidated by the growth that they're seeing around them. In that intimidation, their ego is ignited and they're almost lashing out. They're almost presenting the worst of themselves, the shadow sides of themselves. 
they will at some point they will decide to catch up with the rest of us and they will evolve but until they get there it is very important that you know and that your friends know and that my tribe knows that this is at least what it is that we are dealing with it is better to know what you are dealing with and to be aware than for you to be in a space where you are disconnected and you are not accepting that as your reality okay and it helps you to plan accordingly so that's one thing i want you guys to be very aware of this entire week is this space of mindfulness and being aware and disconnecting from the chaos disconnecting from this lower vibration it, it almost feels annoying it almost feels as though it's a text message that comes through or someone that you know can do better just simply will not or you yourself are just like oh i am so sick and tired of being the bigger person in this situation and you almost want to react you almost want to lash out but there is a power in the person who can disconnect from that lower vibration and just be still and not engage. And I want that to be you and I definitely want that to be me. The other thing that I want you guys to see and be aware of is I feel so strongly and I stand with you in this. I feel so strongly that you know exactly what it is that you want to manifest. You know your intention and you are strong in it. It feels very, I don't want to say stubborn, but it feels very convinced. It feels very solid. The reason why it feels so solid is because I feel like within this last year, this entire year, you have under, you've been undergoing major evolution, major transformations, major transitions, and all of these lessons, all of these things that have been taking place have shown you and have shaped you into who you are and who you are to become. And for that, you are holding on to this vision, this life that you want for yourself, and it is relentless faith, or it is relentless, this is what I want for myself. I am not going to be convinced of anything other than that. This is truly what I want and I see for myself. I do not want to settle for less. I stand with you in that and I relate to that 1000%. This week, as Mercury that rules our mind, that rules our words, that rules what we say and what we speak, it trines and connects with Pluto, the planet of transformation. When Pluto and Mercury connect on this level at the start of this week, it creates a mind that almost relentless it is so convinced and it is very powerful when it comes to setting intention and when it comes to making that or making a plan and moves towards the end goal how you're coming across to other people is very strong and it can almost come uh, come across intense but it's because you know what you want and you will not settle for less when mercury is moving through the sign of virgo as it is now this is you like literally you have left no stone un, unturned you know to a fine detail exactly what it is that you're trying to manifest within your life it is very thorough which can be intimidating to some people or for some people it is not your responsibility to make sure that everybody is on the same wavelength as you and i don't think that you are weighing the opinions of others heavier than you do your own conviction and i stand with you in that i just am i'm wanting to tell you that with this week, this conviction that you have, it's very important that you can take that vision and you can take that convic conviction and write it down. I don't feel called to ask you guys to wait until the full moon and Pisces to write your intention and to work your magic. I feel like even at the start of this week, that any intentions that you write, anything that you put onto paper, or any contracts that you make, any deals that you're solidifying, they are very, very powerful. This is where the mind and the will connect with a force that is unstoppable. Now I wanna put a pin in that because I wanna revisit that, but the next thing that supports that is Mars. Mars rules our action, our ambition, and how we are physically striving to accomplish something and to achieve something. That is meeting with Saturn. Saturn is retrograde, but it's also very solid. It wants to create a plan that will serve you not only in the present, but for the future and all that's to come. But since Saturn has been retrograde and also Pluto has been retrograde this is why we've been seeing a lot of our inner demons and a lot of the things that we thought were solid that we were standing on this firm foundation kind of crumbling out from underneath us at this point I feel like 
you have you're seeing the lesson in that and you're experiencing a lot of the growth but I also don't want to pretend like it isn't frustrating and it isn't exhausting to deal with but again I just think that this is somehow working to motivate you and to propel you to move forward as these planets are moving through the sign of Virgo at the time of me filming this video they're helping you to pay attention to detail and to create that solid plan that is why it is very important for you to connect within yourself and to ground yourself and to almost have a neutral stance and separate yourself from lower vibrational energies and not to get annoyed by these tiny in, uh, inconveniences. Those things will sort themselves out, but especially so on the 10th when the sun sits directly opposite of Neptune, the distract, the deception, the disillusionment, it just becomes heightened. Now, these days that I'm mentioning, they're very specific. So on the 9th, we have Mercury trying Pluto. On the 9th, also, we have Mars trying Saturn. So yeah, that's when they're exact, but that energy is bleeding into the rest of the week. It doesn't, it's not just one and done on that week. It bleeds out into the rest, and it also impacts and folds into the energy of the Pisces full moon, which is gonna be on Friday. So I don't want you to think that, okay, just on the 10th, that's the day that I need to be very aware and observant. No, it's all the energy of this week. And it's also how you're working your magic and setting your intention and making these contracts that could impact you for the rest of your life. Now, remember when I said the word conviction, that your conviction is so solid and it's more than like faith. This is something that you are just going to, like, like a pit bull, you're just going to chomp into and hold onto this vision that you have for yourself. The reason why you're holding onto it so strongly is because it is divinely appointed. But there also needs to be a little, I don't want to say flexibility, but observe, observing what is going on around you, observing your intention, observing your intuition. I feel like when you receive these messages and they're coming through to you, and we'll talk about that in a minute, how they will come through, I feel like as you're receiving these messages, it doesn't require you to act on them this week. It requires you to set intention and to observe and to accumulate that information so that next week and the weeks to come, your path becomes a little bit more clear and more obvious. This is very important when it comes to contractual agreements, but also when you're making connections and building relationships with others. Temperance is a word that is coming through to me now, but it makes a lot of sense because on the 12th, Mars, the same planet that is meeting with Saturn and negotiating with Saturn, is squaring off with Jupiter, the planet of abundance. This concerns me just a little bit because this is when someone, something is doing too much. <laughs> I don't want you to overexert yourself and I don't want you to overpromise. Last week I kept getting these messages for the collective where I just felt the universe and guides telling us slow down. And as I was saying that, I kept getting these notifications on my phone of celebrities and people in certain circumstances that were derailing getting in accidents left and right and or spontaneous deaths. As unnerving and as terrifying as that is, I feel like a lot of those deaths could have been prevented and a lot of those accidents could have been prevented if we did slow down, if we were not rushing. And I'm still seeing that with this week where moderation and temperance is everything. Allow things to fall and fold into place without you having to force and manipulate them or speed in the direction of where it is that you're trying to go. Back to these personal planets with the Sun and Mars and Mercury and Venus all moving through the sign of Virgo. We need to pay attention to detail but it can also create this static energy that is really reminding us to slow down and to be super mindful. This is where we are getting out of our heads and grounding ourselves and solidifying ourselves and rooting ourselves so that we are safe, so that what we are saying and what we are doing is impactful and meaningful and not something that we will later on regret. What I love about astrology and the planets and the universe and divine timing is that, yeah, we have all of this energy that's going on around us that's circulating in the cosmos, but there's always little tiny gifts that are given to us. And I'm definitely seeing that on the 13th and 14th as Mercury and Venus, those brothers and sisters, they meet up and they give so much love. They give so much compassion. They want to connect. They want to, I don't want to say compromise, but they want to work together as best as they can in order to create and to form a bond. As I'm looking at this, I feel like this is the heart. This is pure intention. 
This is hearing from the things that you love, the people that you love, or you being called to be of service and to help others in ways that you might not have normally have considered. And the way that you choose to help and to connect with others really truly does make an impact on their lives and also on yours. To support what I just said, the sun trines with Pluto. Pluto, again, is all about transformation and it's all about things changing in such a large, major way. And what I feel is that what you hear and what you say, what you do, it makes a difference. And I feel like for some of you guys, you will be called to be of service to others. You will be called to volunteer. You will be called to create. That is what you can do, but I'm also seeing what it is that you will be receiving and what it is that you could potentially be receiving. And that is conversations or connections that change your life forever and definitely for the better but I think that at the start of this week it's best to kind of disconnect to pull back to slow yourself down to pay attention to what it is that you're saying to what you're thinking and to create almost like a plan especially when it comes to mantras that can change the course of your day simply by the words that you're thinking and how you're speaking to yourself and how you're speaking to others. And then on Friday, finally, we have the Pisces full moon, which is going to open that portal up completely. Take all that it is that you've seen, that you feel, that you observed, that you've documented, that you've learned, wrap it up into an intention and call out to the universe this vision and these things, these relationships, this job, this connection, this abundance that is going to change your life for the better in a magical way. That's what I'm seeing within the planets. Now let's go ahead and talk about our cards. Okay, so overall, the energy of this week, the cards that I pulled are the Wizard of Awareness. I'm seeing the Ten of Hazards or the Ten of Pentacles reversed. This is from the Zombie Tarot, which I am so in love with right now. We have the World card. We have the Three of Cups and the Three of Wands and the Queen of Cups, and then we have from the Lenormand, the key and the coffin. So as I'm spreading these cards out, the thing that stands out to me is the number three that is so prevalent in these cards. We have the key that is ruled by three three, or number 33. We have the three of wands, we have the three of cups, and then we have the wizard of awareness that is connected to the number three, that is ruled by the number three. And basically, number three is the trine. It is the trinity. As I'm looking at this chart, I'm seeing a few trines that are happening within our chart. Mercury's trining Pluto. Mars is trining Saturn. The sun is trining Pluto. And then we have the full moon. So basically, what we're having is a portal, a door that is being opened. This is exactly that key that it is that you've been waiting for that is opening that door. And this is something that you have been waiting for, that you are hoping to manifest, and that you're hoping to materialize, and now we have the opportunity to celebrate it and to enjoy it. The biggest thing that I'm seeing with this is not needing to force it, not needing to push the intention, not needing for you to push your will. Not only am I seeing it within the chart, but I'm seeing it with the cards, and as I'm looking at this world card, we see this world that's in flames, and we see these two people that are underneath and grounding themselves and just in their own little world. And these two are gonna be so important when it comes to populating this new planet, this new globe. That in itself is a metaphor for what it is that we're dealing with currently on our planet, but I don't even wanna talk about that. That's a topic for another video. But what I'm seeing again is by grounding yourself and staying in your own world, staying in your space and disconnecting from the chaos that's going on around you is going to help you to manifest the future and what is going to come. Not just all of our futures, but specifically your future. I don't know if you guys remember, but in the start of this video, I was saying these tiny annoyances, these tiny things that present themselves that are so irritating and how much I don't want you to be distracted and derailed by them. I want you to focus on this bigger picture that it is that you see, but more importantly, that you feel for yourself because the intuition is really heightened and highlighted. But I don't want you to receive that message and to receive that vision and feel like that in a week's time you're going to manifest and materialize it all. Some things do need to take time to fall into place and to present themselves, especially with the Three of Wands and the Three of Cups. This is what you have already put out there, the energy that you've put out into the universe and waiting for that to come in and to be a tangible force. It will, it will. It's going to be something that is solid 
the key is in your hand, it is going to manifest itself. It is not the end of it. But I think that there are certain things that do need to be released, that do need to be let go of, that need to be laid to rest through the things that have already ended, through the things that you've already said goodbye to. And what I'm seeing is this life coming through this week, or at least starting to come to life this week. And also that's where this manifestation is coming, coming from. For so many of you, I truly feel as though you've already released a lot. You've already cut a lot of cords or you're continuing to cut those cords. But with that, I'm seeing new life stirring. I'm seeing new things being born. And again, it's connected to this energy of infinity. We have the number eight here at the top of this card where as something ends, it doesn't truly end. It just kind of comes around in another form and manifests and materializes in a different way. That's what we're seeing with this trine. So I want you to connect with your intuition and your feeling, this vision, to really use the Neptune energy to work with your imagination and to connect with your sensitivities. Instead of getting frustrated by how sensitive you are, instead of being frustrated by how you can step into an environment and be influenced by it, see how things make you feel and use that as a tool to help you to manifest the right environment, the things, the places, the people that are going to be solid, that are going to give to you in the way that is that you deserve that are going to abundantly provide so that you are not depleted. That is what is in your hand. That is the key that is that you're holding. That is what you're manifesting. And I, I really want to say that sometimes when we talk about manifestation and setting intention, we get so focused on the future. We get so focused on where we're going that it almost creates anxiety for us. Throughout all of this, remember to stay in the present moment. Remember to stay grounded and rooted that this present moment, all of what you have now is something that is to be celebrated and also is tools that you can use moment by moment to help bring you peace. And that peace is going to help to pave the way for your future and your ability to enjoy the gift of your future. But also keep in mind that a lot of what you've manifested currently is also a gift and to enjoy that. So that's a reminder that I want us to keep in the forefront of our minds as this week unfolds. Now, Monday through Friday, the cards that I pulled for us are the home card. We have the spark the Two of Wands reversed, the Nine of Hazards, which is the Nine of Pentacles, we have the Ship, we have the Star, and we have the Woman. These cards cover Monday through Wednesday. When I'm seeing the Ship, and I'm seeing the Star, and I'm seeing the Woman looking towards all of these things, I feel as though this is staying in the present moment, or staying in a space where you are able to feel supported and feel solid. There is a potential that some of you guys are being pulled to travel and being pulled to explore, but in a lot of ways, I feel like this is internal exploration and this is that spark coming alive within you where you are coming to life, where your path and the journey that you are going to take moving forward is something that you are envisioning for yourself that is abundant, it is thriving, it feels good, it is where you belong. I see you connecting through astrology and also through your intuition. What feels like the North Star for you? What, Where are you being pulled towards currently? That vision that you have for yourself. And what I don't want is for you to feel anxious in that and how do I manifest it? I want you to just simply write it down. I want you to simply just know that that is what you want for yourself and to root yourself in that because that is what is ultimately what is being sparked here. I also wanna say that Monday through Wednesday, I feel as though you are receiving glimpses and visions and hints towards ultimately where it is that you belong that you are moving towards. You're finding a home, you're finding, you're finding a heart, meaning like you're connecting with the perfect relationship, the perfect aspects of that relationship, you're connecting within yourself, you're feeling comfortable within your own skin, you're feeling comfortable and finding finding the spaces and the people and the places that you belong, your tribe, your community, you're finding health and healing within yourself. All of these aspects are components to where it is that you are striving to go towards. Not where you're striving, but where you are 
energetically getting pulled and called towards. And this is something that when you see it and when you feel it, you know that it belongs to you. It feels as though it's written in the stars, it's destined, but don't allow it to make you anxious again and how am I going to manifest? It will materialize all on its own. But I just think that the best thing for you to do Monday through Wednesday is to at least just know what that is. If you are having trouble with this, I feel like the astrology chart, your astrology chart is a map of your entire life, a map truly of where it is that you are going to go. So pulling your astrology chart will help to provide guidance as far as where it is that you are looking and where it is that you are being guided to go next. All right, so Wednesday through Friday, the cards that I pulled are the stork, the fish, the man, nine of wands, king of swords, knight of pentacles, the card of coming apart and coming to life. So as I'm looking at these cards, there is a message of discernment. Slow and steady wins the race. Take your time. There's no need to rush. Defenses are up. There's a lot of things that are out there in the universe that you can attract into your life for good or for bad. That if you know that and that's something that we are all working with then make sure that you are not rushing that you are not forcing because if things are meant to come to you let them be things that you actually want for yourself don't just call in anything for the sake of calling it in like i was seeing in the charts and as i'm seeing in the cards i feel as though so many of us have laid a lot of things to rest or there are final components to the things that it is that we are releasing. Maybe we've cut certain ties and certain relationships or exited out of a job or are moved from one space to the next. There's a lot of things that were in a space of transition, physical transition. Maybe those things have physically ended. But when it comes to energy, when it comes to emotions, when it comes to those energetic cords, there still seems to be these cutting of the cords that needs to happen, that needs to be released. As you're releasing the old and starting the new, let this new cycle, let it be something that is positive and constructive and it's very important that you're using discernment and that you're taking it one step at a time and you're doing it the right way. Don't repeat the same mistakes. Don't do the same things that you have done in the past and expect a different result. That is what we're seeing with the stork card. The stork card is all about these cycles and these things that present themselves and show up and we know that we can expect them. If you said goodbye to something, if you've experienced love in the past, you know for a fact that you're gonna experience, experience love in the future. So when the stork comes back and when that cycle starts fresh, make sure it's something that is positive and constructive and it feels good to you and you're not making the same mistakes that you did in the recent past. Let's say this new, this new cycle is a job or a business. Learn the lessons of the things that didn't work out through the past mistakes that you've made. When you put it all down onto paper and you see this bigger vision that it is that you have for yourself, for your business, for your work, for your career, this is just an example. When you feel this bigger pull to your purpose and you've already taken steps towards that, looking in the past, what worked for you and what served you and what didn't, what would you do differently? So this connects again back to the astrology charts, what I was seeing and what I was feeling which is you want to be very observant and mindful and again feel what it is that you're feeling intuitively because it is divinely appointed for you that this is your purpose this is what you're destined to do this is what you're going to do this is what's written in the stars for you but learn from it and do differently don't just be so disillusioned and so caught in okay well intuitively i know that this is my path that you are neglecting okay in order to get to that you have to do this 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 change these things and and also deliver your gift in a way that is constructive and positive not only for others but also for yourself okay so that's a really good example that I can say because I feel like you're connecting to this this cycle of abundance and blessing but don't allow the things that didn't work out the lessons that you've learned don't let that be a part of this new cycle and if it does present itself take those lessons and apply them in a way that you are doing better and you are more structured, more solid, like you are this evolved being that is living, breathing your purpose, right? 
So that's what it's I'm seeing. Looking at these cards, I can see that the defenses are up. That's always what we see with the Nine of Wands, especially with the King of Swords. It's someone or something that is very defensive, very guarded. They may think that they are open. They may think that they're being generous, but their energy is very blocked off. It is what it is. It happens to the best of us. I mean, just look at him. He has all of these guns and he's ready to shoot someone up and light their ass up with some bullets. <laughs> so just be aware that that's the energy that is that you're dealing with. That might be aspects of yourself where you yourself are in a space of self-protection and preservation. And I totally understand. I think that some of this comes from these things that you have split away from and your defenses are up because you're trying to protect yourself from being hurt, from being manipulated, from being taken advantage of. Meanwhile, aspects of you are stirring back to life. They're coming to life because that is the cycle. As one thing ends, something else is going to begin. So it's interesting the dynamic that we are seeing here. I also want to say, as I'm saying this, is that yeah, this is for this week, but it feels very general. It feels like this is something that we've all been dealing with for quite some time. So I don't want to neglect that. I don't want to negate that. Even though, again, this is for this week, I just feel like this is something, a message, a message that applies to us as a whole, as a collective. And it's not just this week. It's what life has been looking like. So if you guys would like to see a video on that, and what I see in the cards, maybe a pick a card reading or a general reading for the collective, I'm more than happy to do that. Moving forward, let's go ahead and look into this weekend. The cards that I pulled for this weekend are the Dragon's Lair and Cleaning House. We also see the Sun card, which is connecting me to health and vitality. The Six of Pentacles, which is giving to others and being generous, generous to others, but also this uh, you know, mutual giving and receiving. The Ten of Wands, which is, I think that some of you guys need to ask for help and to connect with others. Yes, you're strong, the strength card is here, but it's not for you to take on the burdens of everything and everyone. And then lastly, we have with the Lenormand, we have the Writer card, we have the Love card, and we also have the Corpse. So what I feel for this is a message that's coming in on the horizon, definitely with the Writer. It's information, a text message, a bolt of lightning almost is what I feel. It's something that is given to us by the divine, a gift that helps us to plan for our future. It's information that we've been waiting to receive so that we can know the course where we are destined to go. When I'm seeing the sun card, I am seeing the helicopter coming in as a resource just as the writer is here. It feels like things are dead and dormant and in some ways they are because the death card is here, the corpse card, but through that, it's a chance to clean out the things that don't serve you, that cleaning out, that cleaning house, to make way and to make room for what is to come. Discernment is everything because with the dragon's lair, I do see that messenger coming up. It's like the dragon is coming. This is when discernment is so important because you have to decide, is it worth it for me to go through this cycle? Is it worth it? for me to go through these obstacles. If I say yes to this challenge, if I say yes to this project, if I say yes to this person, is this going to be healthy for me? Is this going to be constructive to me? And if the answer is no, then boundaries. That is where your strength is coming coming in. And I think that also this is where the six of Pentacles is coming through, which is being very aware and mindful of who it is that you're giving your energy to and how you're allocating your time and your resources. The strength card is not about forcing your will and pushing your way and knowing your intention and using your willpower and authenticity in order to help things to manifest and to materialize in the way that is for your highest and greatest good. This isn't something that you force, it's something that you just are and because you just are, you receive. Now some final cards that I have pulled for us is the card of solitude, the card of compass, we have the six of wands, the Eight of Swords, the King of Wands, the Tower card, which connects to Solitude, the Woman, the Mouse, and, and the Blade. Then I see Take the Helm and also Turbulence. With these cards, it's like I was saying this entire reading, and I know that this reading is getting long, but you guys know I'm thorough. I feel like with the Solitude card and with this energy of being mindful and aware that disconnection from those minor annoyances that you are canceling out 
and that you have removed from your life with a hot blade and you're taking that time within your tower in solitude in order to connect again with your path and where it is that you're destined to go and where it is that you're called to go, that is what is going to create victory for you. That is what is going to make you feel on top of the world. That is what is going to give you recognition. That is when you hear, okay, I have what it takes. I'm going to do what it takes. Despite how crazy things are going to be, I know that there is a plan. I know that I have direction. I know that I have purpose and I'm going to honor that. When I'm seeing the King of Wands and the Eight of Swords, this is you stepping into your power and taking initiative and not allowing minor annoyances, whether they be external chaos or internal chaos, those plaguing thoughts, that anxiety, that depression, that self-depreciating, that second-guessing yourself. You're not going to stay in that space anymore because that has always confined you. You're going to step into your personal power. You're going to be a leader. You're going to take initiative. You're going to do what it takes. You're going to rise above the chaos and the madness in order to manifest and materialize this greater vision that you have for yourself. And on the Pisces full moon, that's when we see all of these things coming together. You're going to take those words, those thoughts, that vision, and put it onto paper, and it's, it is going to manifest. It is going to manifest. Best. So I know that that is a lot, that is very thorough, but I hope that it has benefited you. I hope that you are able to take notes. I want to invite you to share your journey with me and how this makes you feel and how things are manifesting for you as this week unfolds. The best way to do that is to let me know down in the comments because it serves all of us collectively within the Bahati Vibe Tribe. I want to invite you to follow me on Instagram, of course, because I post there often. And I also want to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. In the meantime, thank you so much for sticking with me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.